Hello everyone and welcome to the Crafty Cauldron. We have another craft with me today. Um, and I want to say hello and welcome to all of the new subscribers and hello and welcome back to all of my existing subscribers that have been with me for a little while. So um, let's get, st get started if I can figure out how to talk. Um, this is our journal. This is the Hecate journal I am working on. It is a chunky girl. And um, yeah, getting really full there. Four signatures with a space in the middle for a little insert journal like a traveler's notebook that I'm gonna make up. It's gonna make it a little bit fluffy, but hey, you know what? So here's what I did today. Let me just set this aside for now. Hmm. This, if you recall, we burned, well, I, we, meaning I, thank you, Dee Fargo, <laughs> um, uh, burned this design into this piece of wood to put on the cover of the journal. And then uh, I stained it with this. It's folk art stains, and this is cherry. Let's see if I can, there we go. Got it at Walmart. Um, when I went to use it, it was a little bit dried up, but I added a little bit of water because it's water-based. I add a little little bit of water and shook it up and it works just fine. So that is a little tip there. Also, because it's water-based, I am thinking about experimenting with that on some paper because it's got a really nice color, as you can see. It's reddish, brownish reddish, really beautiful. So this is going to go right about here. Of course, it's gonna have other things around it as well. But um, I haven't figured that out yet. And there's time, there's plenty of time. And I'm going to end up, end up probably only using two fasteners or because I've already done this on the other side, I could use four. I could put it up higher and use four and then just cover that spot or not. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make any, any difference to me. And I could just leave the brads exposed, but I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I don't know which, which way I'm going to do it yet. So anyway, I put two, um, two applications of the stain on here. Um, it's really easy. You just, um, let me, oh, sorry guys. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Okay, there you go. Um, you just put it on with a soft cloth, cloth or a sponge brush, and then you wipe off the excess and you let it dry for half an hour and you keep applying layers in that way until you've got the color that you want it. One other thing that I have to do to it is put a spray sealer on it, which I haven't done yet. And that will be next because it's gonna have to dry for a couple of days after I do that, just to make sure that it's dry enough to go on the front of, of the journal and not be tacky. So I always let things over dry when it, it comes to stuff like that. So what we've done here is I've, I've got a few things here that I added. I added this little um, folder. It's like a little file folder on the front here. And I, I made it with two tabs because I put this Ex Libris um, journaling card on the inside this back one. And then you can write this book belongs to whatever there. It's a Reader's Digest um, book plate. I thought it was really cool. And then this is a um, woodcut public domain image. It's from, I don't even know when, like a long time ago. And um, I thought that was really cool there. Then this is a belly band and it's not quite done. I've got this little, um, it's a journaling card with coffee stained paper in the back. And um, this is uh, a little pocket here. So it's gonna have a, like a, a couple of tiny tags and there was some info on them. Um, maybe some chants or a tiny tarot card or something. That you've seen that you've seen. Um, I did some, I hand wrote some chants and then put some extra paper in here. And I, I stained these with red. And let me see, where is, oh shoot, I'm so sorry. That's my phone because I forgot to turn it to vibrate because I'm like that. Anyway, uh, this is a, uh, a food coloring that I got at Michael's for like $2. And um, I got it because it's a spray-on food coloring and it's a water-based and it's just, it's just like water-based glycerin with food coloring. It's got three different kinds of red. And I thought it looked kind of neat because you can spray that on there or drip it like I did this one. But all of the papers in this little pocket are like that. 
then i have another chant in this pocket here this is a really cool picture from an old date book that i had by seventh house publishing it's called the witch's yearbook or something like that but i really really love this picture it's a photo manipulation by victoria dannon and um, it's absolutely gorgeous but i wanted to add it to this because this is her interpretation of hecate or hecate and i really love it and then on the back is some um, correspondences and a little bit of information about hecate or hecate either way you want to say that let's see then i glued on a little vintage witchy guy girl there and some pockets with tall tag a little bit of fluff and a short tag right here more cool stuff um, as we go uh, let's see mm -hmm. a little bit here and a little bit there this is an upside down pocket i got this out of an old shakespeare book and the tag goes in upside down it's really neat and let's see a little envelope here i got the envelope from uh serious hecka on youtube it's lisa and she has a body mind spirit store she doesn't have these in her store i won these in a giveaway i also made this triple tag thank you amy at crafty cat for the inspiration and i put a bunch of uh collage stuff on here there's an owl and uh, a couple of little words a wolf and then the back is journaling tags so it goes in that pocket Let's see what else did i do i think this is new it's a little tag i had an existing tag and i just collaged on it and made a little tuck pocket there with a little envelope in it again using little envelopes yes this is a really cool little guy it's a, it's a pocket that gets tucked behind a tag that gets tucked behind this and it just opens up like a book like a notebook if i can get my fingers in there journaling space and then more journaling space so and you can write all over that so let's see journaling tag and this is a over the page over the edge of the page it's just a little pocket and it kind of just folds up like that around the edge of the page i got the inspiration for that from pam at the paper outpost I, it's probably not a new idea but that's where i saw it and there's that and then this is a new little journaling card and this is a little belly band with envelopes and a little notebook uh let's see what else do we have fabric flip fabric flip made out of uh, laces and ribbon very rich in color okay i gotta play with it <laughs> i'm a dork i know what can i say uh let's see um <laughs> went through that already Oh, and this is my elemental page. I don't have anything for earth yet, so this isn't glued down. But I've got a pocket air, fire, water, and then this is going to be earth. And I'm going to find a cool picture for that. This is a poem by Charles Baudelaire, one of my favorites. It's called The End of Day. And it's kind of neat. A little dark, but then so is he Hecate, so, or Hecate. There's a tag. More paper for journaling. And then this is a tuck with a little holly here and a tall tag here, which is really kind of cool and grungy. And then this is a page out of one of the, the Seventh House um, date book. Uh, it's, it's explaining midwinter, summer, winter solstice. And then this is an over the top embellished clip with envelopes that open this way instead of this way. So uh, that was inspired by Gail Augustinelli. Hi, Gail. Um, don't know if you watch my videos, but thank you. You are a very inspiring person. And I'm sure that I can't find anyone who would disagree with that. So, here's that. This is our little um, fold out that we made. The last video that I showed you how to make with the three pieces of paper. Um, and again, that inspiration came from... Um, 
Tamith Paper Outpost. I, I'm fairly certain it's not new, but that's okay. And then this is a flip up. It says with spells and incantations, and then it flips up, and you've got. Oops, I'm out of frame. Here we go. It flips up, and you've got a little piece of paper in here. It's lined. It's an old um, date book page again. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh. Done that. I love this dyed wax paper from Body Mind Spirit Store on Etsy. Mm. There's a tuck. And I've got something ready to go in there almost. This is a belly band. And I took this off of the front of a Christmas card from last year or the year before. I don't know. Made a big envelope and didn't glue it shut. You, This will go through the mail. But you're going to have to put your address either in big print or... Um, on a label, anyway. Um, if you hear noises, my husband is working from home and my dryer is going. This I haven't glued on yet, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna glue it on, but it's gonna go on this page. Um, love that. And then here we go here, a little huge pocket with a tag here and another large envelope here that is not glued shut. And this is an extra, it's got a couple of little pockets here. I need to fill those. And then we're coming to the back, and I'm going to put something here. So what we've got today, we've got, this is a bookmark that I made, and it's, I had, I pieced it together. The, the ribbon and, and the lace were separate. And I just found some ribbon that would fit through the holes in the middle and glued it to this black cardstock and backed it with some um, parchment paper. And then on the bottom, there's a little, it's a little round decoration from Shabby Dabby Doodah's Gothic kit. Excellent kit if you're looking for something Gothic. And that's just a bookmark. You can put that anywhere. I may actually put a, a little um, eyelet in the top and put some things in there, um, like, you know, beads, charms, stuff like that. Okay, so what I'm going to work with today is I have this. This I made. It's a peekaboo card, and it's not quite done. I have to still glue it in the book, but um, it is the bats I glued and the moon I glued on. So I took a regular old small greeting card. I love the fiery colors, so that's why I wanted to use it. Put a little tab on. Um, I lined it with paper so you can... It's not white because... If it's too white, it bothers me, which is one of those in the book is still too white. I'm going to have to do something with that. I'll probably stamp it with script or something. Anyway, uh, coffee dyed paper. And then these are, this is from Roxy, uh, Roxy Creations, her purple kit. And Roxy Creations is on Etsy. If you just look up Roxy Creations, you'll find it. And then this is from my stash and it's a, a, old sheet music that I just shrank down. And then I'm gonna stamp little something in here. I'm not sure what yet, leaves or spiders or something. So there's that, and that has to go in the book. Then we have these really cool little things. These are um, from Chocolate Rabbit. She's got a witch's kit. It's really neat. These are from Chocolate Rabbit. I think we used some of these already in the, in the book. This is from Shabby Dabby Doodah. It's just part of the kit. It's a belly band. And this is a public domain image from my computer. It's just out there. If you just search for, I'm not even sure what I searched for. I've had it from in my computer for a while. So there's that. The other half of our doily that is backed with vellum that I'm going, I'm definitely going to use that. And then this, I thought I could make a little teeny tiny tag because well, not too tiny, but it's good. So we're going to start with that. And um, it does need a back because it's got writing on the back and it's a family tree on the back. I, I don't want to use that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see. Can I cut straight? I doubt it. Let me just use my little cutter over here. Actually, it's a big, giant, huge cutter. I don't want it that long. I want it a little bit shorter. Yeah, squeaky noise is my is my cutter. It's it's on little plastic. I'm um, rubber feet. So we're just gonna cut. I don't need to flip that. I need to flip this the corner. Sometimes I use a an old um, plastic like credit card type thing 
that I've cut corners off of, and that's my template. I have like three or four different sizes on the same card, and I just number them one, two, three, and four. So there's that. And let's find some coffee dyed paper. And I'm going to go ahead and back that. And I think I'm going to use uh, Fabri-Tac 3-in-1, sorry, Beacon 3-in-1. And I'm using this because it doesn't wrinkle my paper. And seeing as how our this journal is getting quite large already and kind of fluffy, I need to keep mm, the wrinkly down to a minimum, I think. Because <laughs> it does tend to take up more space. Uh, yeah, you have about 2.5 seconds to get these in place before you, you have to, before it won't move anymore. Okay, so that's going to go back in the, I need a sip of water. Water is amazing. Okay. So this might be a shorter video because I'm going to have to go and do all of my insulin stuff. But I wanted to get something done today and I wanted to take, bring you guys along. I'm going to be making some folios really soon because I have some holiday gifts that I need to make. I actually have way more holly, holiday gifts to make than I think I can get to, but we'll see what happens because I, I have so many people I want to send things to and well, Everyone has been so kind to me. I just, I just want to send stuff out. Oh, this is black. Darn you. I don't want black. I want my brown dauber. Well, that's okay. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Let's just give it a little bit more black right there. And let's see. I think I'm going to put these in one of those little small pockets in the book. And I'm going to do a side punch. I'll show you. So in here we have, back here in the back, I think I was showing you the little, that one. So if I punch the, let's see. Yeah, I can still punch it. Let's do it on the side. Let's do it like this. I'm going to get my uh, crocodile. This is the handheld one. I have a handheld one. My husband got this one a long time ago. I don't like it as much as the other one, the uh, um, crocodile uh, Big Bite 2. I like that one a lot. Let's use this smaller hole. And I'm going to put it on the side over here because A, I suck at getting it in the center and <laughs> B, that way it kind of can hang out the side of the book really easily. And I just like doing that. So there's that. And I think I'm going to use this raggedy old hemp. This is really, uh, I've had this for years. I don't even know how long. And I'm going to tie it. I'm going to use a lark's head knot again because they're handy and they stay pretty well. The hemp stays pretty well anyway. But, but the lark's head looks really cool. And that's the one where you pull a loop through like this and then, yeah, pass it through and pull it tight. And you don't want to pull it too tight because you'll tear your paper, but you get the point. So it's all ratty. And I will, I'm going to put a couple of beads on there. Let's just put this hemp away real quick. Yeah, real quick. Come on, wake up, Jobel. And I've got this. I have so many beads, I could get rid of half of them and I wouldn't even know they were gone. Isn't that crazy? Okay. I need a little a bowl. I had a bowl. I don't know what I did with it. I used to have a bowl that I would pour all my beads into and it had a little like spout on it. Actually, this would work really well. It's got a little point. Sorry about the noise. Okay, let's 
see. Let's see what we can do. Much too big. Okay, there's a moon. There's some moons. Let's do a blue moon. Let's see if it'll go through the hole. Nope. I'm recording a video. Just thought I'd let you know. Say hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our beautiful video. <laughs> <laughs> In the Halloween spirit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So last night, we uh, for our Halloween movie, we watched The Babadook. If you haven't seen it, it's truly scary. It's one of the better horror movies out there. Um, Mark picked it. <laughs> uh, that should tell you something. Um, that's a good thing, actually. I like that you're, you know, in the spirit of things. Hey, look, a piece of chain. I can take that out of there. Can I say, I don't even have to time here. Me too. It's the only time I get to be myself. Oh, oh. oh that's so not true. <laughs> no, you're right. Fair is when I get to be myself. Fair. We're, we're Rennies. We go to the Renaissance Fair, and it's only a few miles away from here when it happens. This year they had to cancel it because of COVID. So that kind of was a bummer, although Mark did go before they canceled it. So he, he got to have some fun. So I got a reddish moon, and let's see what else I can find. Oh, a little black bead, as long as that can hang out the side of the book and doesn't have to get squished between the pages, because that would make it really hard to write on. Let's see, now I need a, a smaller, one with a smaller hole. Well, that's interesting, it's a tube. Is it glass? No, it's plastic. You can tell by the way they sound when you drop them on something. Plastic beads just don't sound the same as glass beads. There's skulls in here too, but I think that might be too much for right here. So I know watching me dig through all these beads is like watching um, the paint dry. Thank you, Amy, for that reference because um, I'm now going to use it a lot. <laughs> Amy at Crafty Cat. She was talking about how, how sometimes her brain doesn't know what her feet are doing. And oh my God, could I relate? Oh my God, you have no idea. I have done things like walking into door frames and kicking chairs that have been sitting in the same place for weeks, you know, like, you know, in your kitchen and stuff. And you know it's there. Come on. You know it's there. And yet, you kick it anyway. It's like, what the hell is wrong with me? Anyway, I broke a toe doing that one time. <laughs> chair in the kitchen. It, The table and chairs had been there since forever in the same spot. Of course, the chairs do get moved around a little bit. But here I was, I'm cleaning up after Thanksgiving dinner and I kicked the chair really hard. I don't know what made me kick it so hard. I think maybe it was because I was just kind of rushing through cleaning up stuff or something. And I was like, oh, that really hurt. Well, next day, my foot, actually later that day, my foot was really black and blue, bottom and top. And I was like, uh oh. And then the next day it was so swollen, I couldn't get my shoe on. And I couldn't put pressure on it. I couldn't drive. Yeah, it sucked big time. Uh, let's see if I can find, let's see, this green skull, no, don't want to do the skull. Hole's too small. You gotta kind of be really picky with this stuff because it's, um, you don't want to make the bead too big. I wonder if I have something really cool and purple. You don't want the bead to be too big. And you don't want the hole, if the hole's too small, you can't fit any, you can't fit this, fit it onto the string. Let's see, there's that, and then let's see if, yeah, because see, this uh, hemp is not the same size all the way up and down. It's, uh, some of it is smaller and some of it is bigger. So anyway, yeah, it took my foot about, oh god, I don't even know, um, couple weeks to heal to where I could get my shoe on and it didn't you know it wasn't excruciating so that wasn't fun really not fun 
I have broke my toe before. I kicked a baby stroller that was sitting in a hallway. That'll work. And that is lampwork glass bead. That's a really cool bead. It's got gold, uh, silver foil inside. So I'm going to push it up and tie my knot. If I can tie my knot. It's very hairy there. There's a lot of fibers sticking out. Okay. So now we have a cute little tag with some cute little beads. And it goes side into the side of that pocket and hangs out. So when we shut the book, it's going to hang out the side of the book just like that. Kind of cool. Okay. So that's done. Let's see. Let's pour this back in here. I'm going to move away a little bit so I don't hurt you guys' ears. Hopefully I can do this without spilling them all over. Nope. Up. Oh, nope. Nope. They're all over the place now. Do I care? Not really. I can find them later. I don't sweat the small stuff, generally. Although last night my whole container of washi tape dumped itself. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Seriously, though. What happened was I have it sitting underneath part of this workspace, and it is it was sitting on top of some folders against the edge or the side of a filing cabinet and I didn't realize that I had pushed it too far back and there's nothing behind there there's a big empty space because I cleaned that part out and put the stuff somewhere else and um, <laughs> yeah um, they all fell it like tipped over and went top down so yeah you know what I think I'm going to do with this is I think I'm going to put it on some black paper. And this black paper is, um, it's almost like, uh, it's like the kids drawing paper that you can get on Amazon. This stuff. It's almost like an old book page. Um, Amy at Crafty Cat mentioned that, and I got some because I really like that idea um, of having paper that feels like old book page. And so far, it's been really great. Um, this one, though, I think I'm just going to put it on here. So this paper isn't true black. It's not super black. It, it's a little lighter, which kind of makes it look a little faded. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on this. Cut it on my rotary cutter over here, which I freaking love this thing. It was a gift from my husband uh, about a year ago. And um, I absolutely adore it because it is the bee's knees. It's a rota trim. And they are made, I think they're made in England. Yeah, they're made in England. They are amazing self-sharpening. I, I am not affiliated with the company. wish I was, but I'm not. And uh, they have a guard and they have um, a little bracket that keeps your paper straight. Just really, really cool. If you have a problem keeping your um, paper cutters, paper trimmers in working condition, you find yourself buying paper cutters, you know, new paper cutters periodically. I highly recommend this thing because, oh man, I just chopped that in half. Well, that's what I get. Oh, I have a bunch of stuff sitting on my roller, on my trimmer. Um, anyway, I highly recommend getting one of these, even though they're a little expensive, because you probably won't have to buy another one for a really, really long time, and that is a good thing. Okay, where is my black? That is my black dauber. I think I'm gonna put black around here and I'm gonna use Distress Black Soot. And I'm just gonna put it around this picture. Now this picture, I cut around it with one of them fancy, you know, craft paper cutter, scissor type fancy edge things. And this one is, I think this one is Deckle but I'm just gonna put the black ink around 
the outside. And we're going to then glue it to the black paper. Now, you can still write on this as a journaling card. If you write on it with pencil, it shows up as shiny writing. And if you get it in the light, like if you wanted to write something that was sort of secret, y you could because, I mean, at first glance, you may not even see the writing. But the thing is, is it's sort of secret. It's kind of fun. Or you could write on it with like a neon pen. Um, Sakura makes some neon pens or some moonlight pens and those are good too. I'm going to use Beacon 3-in-1 so it doesn't buckle and wrinkle. Um, you can use a white gel pen and I highly recommend that as a writing tool for the white, uh, for the um, black paper. And the reason why is because when I was growing up, my mother had a, uh, an old photo album it was a vintage photo album, very, very old pictures, like great-great-grandmothers and stuff like that. I don't know how she got this. I think she got it when her mother died, but she was keeping it. I hope my brother has that. That would be that would be awful if that got lost. But anyway, all the pictures were put into this photo album with those little corners. And um, they're like, they're just, they just attach to the page. The corners just attach to the page. And then you tuck the picture into the corners and it's really, really cool. It looks really great. But she did all the writing in that photo album with white ink and you could get white ink like um, speedball white ink or um, artist's ink or something like that. Now see, doesn't that look nice? I think it looks really nice. So that's another journaling card. Let's go ahead and do this one the same way with the black. I really like that. So we're going to go, where is my dauber? There it is. Okay. We're going to go around this. It doesn't really need much, but I wanted to hide the white edge. Maybe add a little bit of aging stuff. And sometimes I like to use the black and brown together to make it look like it was burned. And I can show you how I do that. That is fun. Okay, let me get my pencil and just make a mark here where I want to put the... I think that looks really cool. Here and here. And turn on my little book light over my paper cutter. And let's see. I've lost one of their, they're actually not that difficult to see, especially if you've got a light on them. Okay, and where is my, oh, oh, oh. there we go. Yep, there it is. I was looking for the mark. <laughs> and there we have it. So I'm going to glue that on again with the three in one. Oh, you guys, I found this really great deal on Amazon. I don't know if it's still there or not, but I found a three pack of eight ounce bottles of Beacon three in one for $25. And I had a gift card and I used it on that. Oh my God. I could not believe it was that inexpensive. And then the shipping was free. So, oh my gosh. I was so surprised. What a savings, you know? Three eight ounce bottles of Beacon 3-in-1. I will try and find the link if it's still there and put it in the description of the video. If I don't, if I forget to do that, and you want to know, I just, just um, let me know. Um, leave a comment and, and you know, give me a little, as a Tina at Shabby Dabby D Doss says, give me a nudge. Give me a nudge. I don't mind. Do not mind. Oh. Let's have that sucker back down inside of there. That doesn't always work. I hate wasting glue, especially this glue, because it's my favorite. 
Okay, so now we've got two journaling cards. Those are going to go in. And let's see. That needs to go in. And uh, let's just find places for those. Oops. I also found this. Um, it's a little book full of bats, bats of the world. If you're interested in something a little different and you don't want to, to put birds all the time or butterflies or flowers, this is a really cool little book. I've, I've cut out some of it already, but it's got some neat pictures in it if you want to like do fussy cuts of bats. Look at that bat. How colorful and pretty. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Orange painted bat. It's tiny. Yeah, this is the kind I think we have around here. We have these tiny little bats. There's a lot of little nooks and caves up in the Superstition Mountains. And um, in the evening, in the summertime, the bats fly all around here. And you can tell that they're after bugs because um, they, uh, they are swooping and diving. It's really cool. Okay, let's get this book. And let's... I think I'm going to put some kind of something over the spine as well. I don't know if I want to make dangles, but I might still. I might still. We'll see what happens. See how I feel about it. Let's see. Will this fit in? No, it's too wide, and I'm not going to trim it. Let's see. This needs to be... This needs to be added to the page. And I like that it's got the little tab that says October right there. Yeah. That's really neat. Because I can hang it over the page. And I rounded the edges myself. I did that. So I can hang it over the page and make a little hinge out of paper or something. And just have it open like that. And then you've got a page underneath that you can write on. So let's look for a place to put these cards. I may have to make another pocket. I am not sure. I'm pretty sure there are some in here though. We've got some more water. Mm. That's a good one. I like this one. It's a double pocket. So that's a full page. Um, here. Hmm. Let's see, let's keep looking and see. I'm just gonna keep my finger there so I don't lose it. Cause you know how you're, you're flipping through and all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, I wanna put that somewhere else. And then you can't find it. You ever do that? I do that. Let's see here. Stenciling, lots of stenciling in this. And I haven't even done the stamping yet. I tend to do the stamping last and I use the drawing, the writing board that I made I'm going to use the, the writing board that I made for this book. Here's the writing board. And this is from Cauldron Craft Oddities. And this is from a paper pack, and I stamped it with some scripty stamp. But that's just so you can put it under the page, and you have a surface to write on. But that's what I use when I'm stamping in the books, because I tend to wait till last to do the stamping, because I know, that way I know where I'm, you know, what everything surrounding it is like, and I can match the stamps to the themes of the pages. So, but yeah, um, I don't need that anymore. Nope, and I, and I picked up my finger. Now, where did I put that? Where did it go? There it is. Oh, it's at the beginning of the second signature. Well, that's easy to find. So let's see. Where do I want to put this? Maybe I'll leave it there for now. Ooh, let's put it there instead. That has nothing in it. Let's see if it'll fit. Yay! It's perfect. I think I'm going to put a little... Oops. Come on out of there, you. There we go. I'm going to put a little uh, topper on it. I think I'm going to put some lace. Let me find my laces. There should be some narrow black. Here it is. I keep stuff like stuff I use a lot right here. 
right there. There's only a little pile of things I'd show you, but I'd have to actually swing the camera down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this maybe about that much, cut here, put it back in the bag. And I keep them in the bag so they don't pick up um, little threads from other fabrics. Because that drives me crazy. It's so hard to get them out sometimes. Let's see, let's move this book here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut... Oops. Let me put something lighter behind me. Right there so you can see better. I'm going to cut around the flowers a bit so it doesn't have that big border on it. I think that would look better. And yes, no, I didn't have a plan when I started this video. I know this is boring, but um, you know, all I can say is I just go where the, the creative muses take me. I just do whatever comes to mind. That's my creative process. And uh, speaking of creative process, um, I saw this really great tutorial using two Reader's Digest books on um, the Book Vandal um, video, on a Book Vandal video. And if you guys haven't watched Dawn at the Book Vandal, oh my god, she has some really great ideas. But um, she made a, a double journal book out of two Reader's Digests, and they kind of fit together, fit one inside the other. It is so cool. So um, I'm going to make one of those, and I'm thinking I should just do one of those for, um, uh, I'm going to make a, like a midwinter journal, like Yule journal. And I think I might just do that with that, make that Yule journal with the, um, You know what just occurred to me? Anyway, with the, the book vandal idea, Dawn's idea, the book vandal, I think I'm going to make this kind of long. That's so cute. Isn't that cute? I like it. And then I have an extra piece here for another tag. Hmm. I don't generally cut fabric with these scissors. They're my fussy cutting scissors because they've got a really nice spring in them. And I have a little bit of trouble with my hands sometimes, so. But you can't stop me from crafting and stuff. In fact, I've started crocheting for the holidays and making some stuff to send to people. I hope they're well received because not everybody likes crochet stuff. Um, when I started crocheting this season, <laughs> it's funny, um, I got out all my yarn and I started crocheting, made something new, and um, new for me anyway. A new idea for me and not a new idea <laughs> and um, the acrylic yarn made my nose itch so bad and it just reminded me of when my kids were small um, my my young oldest when he the first time he wore an acrylic sweater he broke out in a, a rash and I was just like, whoa, where did that come? I mean, you know, he's your first kid. You don't know where this is coming from. New mom. And I'm just like, what's going on? What in the heck did this to, to my kid? So anyway, little bits of lace all over. So that looks kind of neat. So I'm going to wait a couple seconds. So we found a place for that one. Now I want to find a place for this, this little card. And when I, when I use these, I can stamp it later, yes, um, but when I use these, I tend to put them so that they open from the center to the outside like that. So they've got a little bit more structure. Um, they add structure to the page, but they, they're easier to write on if they're, you know, supported by the rest of the book, if you know what I mean. I, I, I don't feel like I'm explaining that very well, but... Um, we can, let's see, uh, where do we want to put that? I don't want to put it on this. This is too thin, I think. Yeah, I, I don't like that there. I don't think it looks good. Um, ooh. 
Too much? Yeah, too much. Too much with all the poisonous flowers right there. <laughs> so it's gonna go like on this side somewhere. Um, well, that kind of looks cool. So we'd have this here and we'd have this flip up here. And what I tend to do is I, first of all, I want to ink this because it's very white. Where's my vintage photo? Good old vintage photo. Okay, that's good. Looks old. Er. <coughs> oh my gosh, our time is almost up. Yeah, almost up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it here. And it's going to open kind of like this. But... I'm going to leave this end, oh, this side open so it can be also a hidden pocket. So there you have that. That is what I'm doing. Again, I'm using Beacon 3-in-1. So this is going to help add structure to the page. You know what? Hold on a second. And now I'm like, do I really want it on that page? Yeah, what the heck? What the heck? Let's just commit, right? Make sure I'm doing that right. So it's going to go like this, and down here, and here. Okay. Make sure I'm not sticking my finger in it. So here, like that. And I'm just going to hold that for a second. Put the glue back where it goes in the little box. I have a little box to the side over here, over, over there, huh. that um, holds a lot of glues, a lot of my glues. And I use it because I was just putting my glue over there and they were falling off of my table. Um, especially if they're like, you know, top heavy. Okay. Kind of neat, kind of neat. There you go. I think I may actually just put a tarot card in there. Or two. I have some, uh, an old deck that I, I use for this kind of thing. And I also have a, um, a couple of digitals of really old tarot decks that you can find everywhere. And um, let's put this in here. Let's see, is it dry? Still a little tacky, but I think it'll be okay. Let's just stick you down inside of there. Oh, what? You're not going to fit now? Come on. Come on. There we go. Just remembering that that is a paper pack. Now look, it doesn't that look cool? Look at that little... And I don't know what this looks like to you, but this is deep royal purple right here. This page is. And it's the back of this page. with There's this really cool design on it. And this is from the front of... Let me see if I can... One of these, the Enchanted World series books, it's not from this book, because this book is red. It's got the, the red stuff in it, but I'm going to save this and make a, a large journal out of it and replace the spine and stuff. I think it would make a really cool journal cover. Really cool, especially for something like a, an heirloom book, or, you know, where you can pass it down to your kids or whoever, someone else who, who has the same interest as you. So, um, yeah, but that's where this page came from. Another one of those books, the Enchanted series. And then um, I think it was Ghosts or some. I don't, I don't remember. But there's a whole bunch of books in there. There's like 20 books in the series. Dragons and fairies. And the fairy book has some really great pictures in it. They're all in copyright. But you can find them on eBay. And I didn't pay very much. I think I paid $5 a piece for the books that I bought. I got like half the set and the shipping was free so that was an incredible deal for me okay what else do we have let's see oh and then i found this in an old calendar this is really cool i just it's from the edge of the page there's one of these on every month so there's potentially there's i'm not going to use them all because some of the pictures on the other side are just too pretty but this is from gothic alchemy and um, their calendar for like, oh, I don't even remember.
remember. It was like 2006 or so. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. But it's an excellent calendar. I love the, the gothic um, flavor feel of the calendar every year. It's really, really cool. And they also, I believe, have a coloring book, gothic alchemy coloring book through Coloring Heaven? I'm not sure. It just seems like that's where it's from. Oh, that looks really pretty there. I think I'm going to do that and glue it down, but leave it as a, as a little corner tuck. And then stick a neat little envelope in there. So, because it's shiny, I can either use art glitter glue, which I think I'm going to, or I can use uh, three in one. But the art glitter glue has the little tiny tip. Now my bottle is messed up because this, this tip on mine, see how it's out really far? It wasn't always like that. It comes out. It, the bottle is kind of old and I, I have a new bottle. I'm just waiting to use this up <laughs> and then start using the new bottle because wow. What a pain. You take the little toppy thing off and it just pulls the whole pin out. I mean the the tube. So I'm going to put that in all oh, this generous amount of glue on there so it doesn't oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get carried away, lady. So I'm gonna make that a tuck. I can't go over the whole thing. Okay, so let's just make sure I've got glue everywhere I want it to go here. To the edges back edge. It's probably enough, but I really don't want this to come up. So we're going to do it this way. And yeah, it's kind of shiny, but I don't mind in this case because the picture is so darn cool. The little raven. It's really neat. Okay, so now we've got a little tuck here, and let's see if I have any envelope. I had cut out a bunch of envelopes. I have an envelope punch board, and I'm not sure if any of these are going to work for me. Nope, I don't like them. So I'm going to figure out another um, paper to punch an envelope out of use that one instead yeah, because I don't like those I used ugly paper for those <laughs> you're probably like oh man ew so there we have a little tuck so we're getting it's coming along it's coming along let's put the glue back the lid back I still haven't found a place for this little demon lady my little cluster with an applique Oh, I don't like it there. Nope, don't like it there. I may not use it. I might just change my mind because, you know, we can do that. Ooh, what about... That's going to make that really heavy, though. I don't really want to do that. Hmm. I kind of like it there but it'll get in the way of the paper clip. It's a little big too, because that envelope's pretty, or that pocket is pretty small. I need to make little baby tags for that. Baby tags, or tiny journaling cards, something like that. Maybe, maybe on that, maybe. We'll see what happens. I love it that I could just not you know, if I don't feel it, I don't do it. And then that's fine. I, I like that. Hmm. It's pretty plain over here. Maybe I should do that and just leave it like sticking out the side and the top. That's kind of cool. Or I could put it down here and make it a tuck. Like turn it sideways a little. That's what I think I'll do. Fabri-Tac! I'm sorry, three in one. That's what I'm going to do. Three in one. Okay. 
So I'm going to use a generous amount of this. So it's partially on the lace edge, and none of it with glue is actually off the page. None of the parts with the glue. So what I do sometimes, and this is kind of a tip, is I have these um, cutting mats. This one is just really seen better days, but I use it all the time. Um, these are those um, vegetable cutting mats. I just cut this one up. You can buy these um, at the dollar store, you can buy them at Walmart, probably Target, other places like that. What I do with them is sometimes if I have something that I need to let dry, I will just put part of one over the thing that needs to dry because it won't stick to this as well. And I can take it out. And because this is cloth, it's fabric, it, it doesn't, there's not a whole lot right there, but it would stick to the paper and I don't want that to happen. So. Instead of just shutting the book, I'm going to stick this over the top and then just keep that in there and let it dry. So I, we're about in an hour and I'm going to go ahead and go. And um, I would just want to thank you guys for coming along with me on this. I'm hoping to have the little insert notebook for this piece of elastic in the center done the next time I do a video on this journal. I'm also, like I said, I'm gonna do a folio thing. I have some um, really nice chipboard that I got and I have a whole bunch of it. I got it in a pack from someone who was closing a print shop. I think I've told you guys about him before. A husband, my husband's friend's uncle, which I'm eternally gr grateful for all of the paper that he gave me because there's no way in heck that I can ever use it all. I do have some in my, my Etsy store. Um, but it's really nice paper. So, and I give some away sometimes too. My, my best friend's mother does scrap, does uh, junk journals as well. And I just give her paper. She's on a limited income and I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do that. So anyway, thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for coming along with me on this, for hanging out with me for a little while. Um, I, I'd like to say thank you to all of the people who have been giving me shout outs and pinning my posts that's um i i'm sure i'm gonna forget somebody but eileen and now there's a crafty idea and ideas times two they pinned my post and um other people um i can't um tina at rehatch designs mentioned me and i want to thank her for that as well um rehatch designs tina has a lot of really great ideas you guys if you haven't seen her videos i'm highly recommending her as well so um, she does a lot of uh, uh, process videos where she makes something all the way through and shows you everything that she does. And she goes through her whole process of making the decisions and designing the, the elements and it's just really cool. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, there are other people that have mentioned me as well and I wanna thank you all because it's really, really hard to get noticed on YouTube and it's really hard to, to gain s subscribers and um, all of that helps and that's why i mention other people as well because all of it helps and we need to we need to support each other it's a community we need to support each other so i will see you guys soon peace love and remember it's not about the destination it's about the journey make it a happy crafty and colorful one and everybody please be safe out there be safe hug the people that you can hug because you never know when you won't get another chance Take care, and I mean that. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.